Hey guys, it is Cam from Craft and Tailored, and in this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we are talking about a swatch. Yeah, can you believe it? Uh, we're talking about the Houdini Swatch System 51. Um, I like uh, the brand Houdini. Uh, I think swatch is cool. And this was a collaboration that when I saw it, I instantly had to have it. So I got one for myself and it is my personal collection. No, it's not for sale. No, you can't have it. I don't care if you want to pay me 500 to a thousand dollars or whatever it is. <sighs> Nick, you're fired. I love Houdinki as well. I think that um, they are like the grand poobah uh, of, I'm really stuck on that today. Grand poobah. Grand poobah of, uh, you know, kind of bringing watch collecting culture into the limelight. And I'm a big fan. I know that a lot of you guys are big fans. I think these collaborations that uh, Houdinki is able to do is really cool and incredible. And so this was one of the collaborations um, that I, I just think is awesome and I think worthy of risk time and sharing with you. So um, interestingly enough, this is my first swatch. I know that a lot of people start their collecting with uh, like kind of kitschy cool watches like swatches or Winnie the Pooh watches or Mickey Mouse watches or things like that. Let's talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the System 51 and um, some of the hot horological uh, you know, elements that make this thing interesting from a mechanical perspective, not just from a design perspective. Um, so it's the Houdinki Swatch System 51, Houdinki Generation 1986. That's a mouthful. I think the inspiration based on what I've read about it is from the year 1986. And it's kind of cool if you go to the Houdinki site, I'll provide a link in the description below. Um, but basically, uh, 1986 was a, a, a year where a lot of things happened. Uh, so in their uh, write-up, they talk about Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Top Gun, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. That was her uh, first, um, I think the airing of the Oprah Winfrey show started in 86. The watch to me, what what, what drew me to the, to the watch was it kind of has almost like a Submariner style dial, I guess. Um, with like a faux tina, I guess is, is what is what we would call it. Um, the watch is is swatch. It's it's like a it's a plastic watch. It's one of the only it's the only plastic watch that I own. Um, but I really like it. Uh, who the the tagline in Houdinki's advertisements is um, uh, you know the your your favorite. Uh, you know, weekend watch. And that's kind of when I wear this watch. I wear it on the weekend. Um, it's light, it's fun, it's casual, um, but yet it's cool and kind of different and sophisticated, I guess, it, it all in the same time. So in any case, the dial itself kind of looks like a sub dial, but what's interesting is that it has a date complication that's located at the six o'clock position. Um, exhibition case back, which is really, really cool. Um, the interesting thing too is when I first got the watch, I was like, oh cool, it's an, it's, it's an exhibition case back. But what's interesting is the rotor is like clear. Um, and then I guess the oscillating weight is on the outside. So it's kind of an interesting design from um, from a visual perspective. It's it's really, really cool. Um, obviously it's, a, it's a, a simple movement, but I could see this being an entry piece for somebody and kind of the gateway drug, you know, so to speak, uh, because you know, the, the movement's exposed and I've even found myself like winding the movement and just kind of looking at, you know, how everything works, um, which is really cool. Um, you can see all the barrels and you can see the mainspring and it's just, it's an interesting watch and I think it kind of draws you in. Um, not from just the top side of the watch, but also from the back side as well. The other thing too is it has a Navicron hairspring um, and that's one of the Swatch Group's most significant recent innovations. Uh, so it's an anti-magnetic uh, hairspring. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, and the watch itself is, I guess it's made out of a plastic or a polymer or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's just fun and cool. And watches don't need to always be exclusive and expensive and whatever for them to be desirable and fun and interesting and, and whatever. Um, quick set date feature, which I think is cool, right? So I wear the watch on the weekend, which is kind of nice so that I can kind of skip ahead to whatever date it is. Um, silicone based strap or silicone based strap rather, uh, really comfortable when on wrist. Uh, the design cues of the watch come from uh, a watch that was called the Emerald Diver. 
um, that was released by Swatch in uh, 1986. Um, it was kind of, you know, Swatch has always been kind of that watch for me when I see them. They're like loud and interesting and they use cool straps and, you know, green cases and purple cases and kind of all these things. And the Emerald Diver, the case of the watch was like this emerald green color and it had like this like kind of hot pink strap. It was like very 1986. Um, but the dial had kind of similar cues with like a yellow dot marker, a triangle at the 12 o'clock position, and then um, you know these red uh, indices at the uh, six and the nine with a day and a date complication uh, at the three o'clock position with a red sweep seconds hand and hands that are kind of similar to this. I think that that's um, where some of the design came from. Um, and I think that Houdinki was kind of leveraging that design as inspiration and then kind of updated it for uh, for this. Um, system 51 actually comes from the movement. So um, the System 51 movement was first revealed at Basel World in 2013. And um, it basically kind of created a little bit of a buzz across the watch industry. What Swatch had done was created a mechanical watch that were, required zero hand assembly. And basically it uses mechanized uh, building. So it's basically completely built um, in Switzerland um, so it's a Swiss watch, which is cool, but uh, it is basically, uh, you know, a, a mechanically automated built movement, which I think is is cool. So, yeah. And the other thing, uh, just if we want to do like an unboxing thing, I know people get all like hot and heavy for like unboxing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on a glove here because, you know, this is a very, very serious piece of equipment here, Nick. Okay. You need to wear gloves because you don't want to put your fingerprints on it and you also don't want to damage the case. Precious material. So uh, there's the watch itself. On that cool strap. I feel like real hip wearing this. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to go drink a lot of coffee in cool places, wear funky hats, maybe grow a mustache or beard. And then also invest in things like, you know, mustache wax. And uh, what do they call those bags? the over the shoulder ones, Me like a messenger bag made out of Halloween shell cordovan. Purse. A man, a purse, yeah. Back to the unboxing thing. We're not gonna unbox it. We can't even grip anything with this freaking glove on. Uh, this is what I think more watches should be shipped from. You know what I'm saying? Like a little, little case, little outer box. Like, it just works. Uh, case anybody's wondering, yeah. I still got the stickers. They're right here. Okay, I save the stickers. So in 45 years when this is a hot and desirable collectible, I've got the box, I've got the papers, I even got the stickers, all right? And everything has been handled with a white glove here. Just kidding. These watches are now not available. Um, they have completely sold out. I'm very honored and lucky to have one. Thank you, Houdinki, for sending me this. Um, really, really love it. Um, and they didn't, let me, let me be very clear. Houdinki didn't send me this. Although Houdinki, if you ever want to send me anything because you're a fan of yours truly over here, feel free. Uh, but I just thought it was cool. I wanted to support Swatch and the collaboration in Houdinki. I'm a fan of everything that they do. And, um, I think that this is just cool. So, um, in any case, uh, I'll provide a link in the description below so you can learn about this. And I think Again, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it, one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of review it, so to speak, is because I think that, you know, cool and vibey and unique and fun can be in watches that are, you know, $170, maybe even less in some cases. Uh, and they can even be made out of plastic and rubber um, and still have something cool with, within them that makes them special from a horological perspective, like the System 51 movement. I think that that's cool. Uh, the, you know, anti-magnetic hairspring, that's cool. Um, so it's a true watch nerd's watch, and I think the design and implementation and execution of everything is is cool. So I'll provide a link in the description below so that you guys can read the Houdinki write up on it and uh, check this out. And um, yeah, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram for the latest updates and uh, stuff from us here at Craft and & Tailored, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.